So uh, welcome back to another bungalow project. This week I'm going to go back in time to January this year when we didn't have to do any social distancing and I helped finish the carport that my dad had already built. I work full time from home so unfortunately I wasn't able to help out with building the structure but I am going to fit the polycarbonate roof on with them. And what I didn't realise is that you can buy it in a kit and he'd already measured and made his first cut which he then likes to use as a template. So I then use that off cut that was left over from the first one and line it up with the top of a new piece and I'd make a mark along it. Before I cut it my dad suggested to double check my measurements because this stuff isn't cheap. And then I'd simply cut with the handsaw and by the way it's resting on some saw horses. And before I continue with the next job I pull back some of the protective film. There's only one way the polycarbonate sheets can go and it should say on the film. And then I covered my newly cut edge with some aluminium foil tape. From memory I believe this was to stop any water getting in which could then lead to a potentially funny coloured foggy roof. And because these sheets will be attached to some trim and will have some rubber seal later I needed to cut this down to the same length. So I've got someone kindly holding it for me while I cut with a hacksaw. I also cut down some plastic strips which are covers that slot into the aluminium strips. So these needed to be the same length but I'll also show you how we sometimes cut them in situ later. I want to learn that that tin foil should go on both sides. As for the rubber seal that will fit shortly in the trim, there's two pieces here and it comes stuck together. So I'm finding the centre point and pulling it apart. I'm starting it at the beginning. It did move as I went, but I found it easy enough to pull back. Again, you've got to keep your eye on it and fold it over the groove and keep going until the end and go back to the beginning to check your work. And that seal also goes on the opposite side. And now it's ready for the first sheet to be fitted. If you've got any questions at all, by the way, of how the structure of the carport was built, then feel free to ask below and I'll try and find the answers and get back to you. So after that one went up, I'm getting a lesson of tucking the metal strip underneath the sheet. And we're making sure it's all lined up. Definitely double check the rubber seal again. And now I need to pilot hole some screw holes dead center of that trim. But you definitely don't need to go as far as I did. Otherwise you might need to use a bigger screw and the screw head might not slot in. And finally, screw that down. And from the looks of it, I think I did that about every 40-ish centimeters. And now we need to fit a cover on top of that. It's like a cap piece that slots inside the center groove of that metal strip. And mallet that in place with some wood on top so it didn't break while it was getting fitted. And to make sure the carport was structurally sound, we were asked to fit some gallow brackets. These are just structural timbers cut with a 45 degree angle, then pre-drilled and screwed to the wooden post and the beam above. Another thing that we did to make sure that the polycarbonate sheets were fitted down was to pre-drill some holes in some of the battens and I'd screw it down but I'd attach it with this plastic thing that had a cap to cover over the screw. I'll find links to them and leave them below but they may actually come with this kit anyway. Also note that the guttering on the house is above it but any water that lands on this roof will slope down towards the side and we'll add some guttering to that bit shortly. And exactly the same thing with the cap, it needed to be cut down to size. These are only plastic from what I remember, so it was fine to use a handsaw. And to cover the face of the wood, we've got some UPVC with a lip. We had to get creative with this and I'm cutting it down to the same depth. He also had to work around the side of the bungalow roof. And after it had notches cut out, I'm hammering it in place with these nails that have got a white head on top that's specially designed for this job. 
and another strip was also siliconed and stuck down. And because there's raw edges on the corner, we're also fitting some corner end caps to cover them up. For this, I'm just pre-drilling some small holes before I nail them. Next, we needed to sort out some guttering because who wants to get dripped on? And the first thing that's getting fitted is this downpipe piece. And after cutting a really long piece, because we'll be creating a soakaway soon, I screwed it to the post with brackets. But while that's here, we then worked our way backwards. And this was really tricky with trees in the way, but after working out where we wanted our guttering to go, if you wanna see how I've done that in the past, I'll leave a video link below but I'm screwing the brackets to the side. And instead of marking everywhere where I wanted them to go, I'm using a wooden batten cut to the same length. And I use that as my reference point. And while I did that, my dad added another trim piece on top of the front fascia of the carport. And I thought that looked rather cool. Now let's get back to the soak away. What the building inspector suggested was bigger deep enough trench Hopefully I'll get to show you this at some point and put some gravel there so it will drain nicely. And then we've got another downpipe that will join to the one that's already fitted and drill some holes in the one that's buried under the ground where this trench is. But it's one of those things we'll get round to doing it eventually. But that's where we're gonna be going with it anyway. But we had a bit of spare time so I gave it a shot digging myself. Although there's quite a bit of hardcore underneath, we think it needs to go a bit deeper. But anyway, if you have any questions on this project, feel free to ask below and I'll try and get the answers for you. And hopefully you're all staying safe and that I'll see you next week. Thanks for watching. Bye.